Hello guys, in this video I will try the new IDE Google Anti-Gravity for specifically Laravel project with React.js on the front end. They call it next generation IDE and I will test it with the new also new Gemini 3 Pro model for a relatively small task based on a real job from Upwork, this one. And I'll show you two things. Is anti-gravity good as an editor with tab completion? And then we'll test out the agent with Gemini Pro and see whether it can deliver Laravel and React code. I will try anti-gravity on this Upwork job. Very simple one, Laravel plus React, simple user management app, which actually means the default Laravel and React starter kit, which contains the authentication and then admin should manage users. That's the whole point. So we will create admin user and then the list of other users in the table. Will anti-gravity with Gemini Pro handle that? So I've created a totally fresh Laravel project with Laravel new chosen React Starter Kit. And we already have that website so I can register with SQLite database with fake filler Chrome extension. I can go inside and see the dashboard. So the plan is here to add a users menu, which would be visible for admin user. And we need to obviously create the field for is admin, for example, without any complex roles and permissions. And that is admin would be able to see the list of users. Kind of a simple but realistic test. And for that first, I want to show you the coding features of anti-gravity and specifically autocomplete tab, which actually was a pleasant surprise. So I opened the terminal and generally everything is VS code. So same keyboard shortcuts, same terminal and stuff like that. Same command P keystroke to open something. And if I open that file and let's close the terminal and the sidebar for now, if I go here and hit enter, it should suggest table boolean. And now it's suggesting is admin. Of course, it could be one tab instead of two, but still quite good. Tab again, and then tab to jump to another line for down migration and drop column, tab to jump here back. So within the same file, it auto suggested everything and I didn't type anything manually. Then in the user model, which I need to add fillable to, let's scroll down to fillables. And if I put the cursor here, as expected, it's auto suggesting is admin and I just hit tab. Compared to cursor, which is number one in autocomplete and tab, cursor would probably suggest the tab earlier as soon as I open the file, not as soon as I navigate to a specific place, but still quite good. And then the third thing I want to add is add the actual admin user, which is an database seeder of Laravel. So by default, it has test example com as a user. And then if I land the user here, does it suggest anything? Yes, it does. So we hit tab admin user with admin example com and with is admin true. So it understands the new code that we had just generated or written. So yeah, the editor experience with tab, which I'm a big fan of is pretty good. Now let's try to execute those migrations with seeds. Now in the database, we should have admin user and we can log in with admin. So now in the same project, admin example com log in and I'm inside. So it actually works. Now let's go and try anti-gravity agent with Gemini 3 Pro. So I closed all the files and this is the keyboard shortcut code with agent command L. You can enable or disable it. And now let's try to prompt it for something. And this is my prompt, generate menu item users. There should be a table listed users with is admin false. And also as a context, I'm saying that this is Laravel 12 project with React starter kit. Down below, you can choose the model. By default, it's Gemini 3 Pro High, but also you can choose Claude Sonnet 4.5 inside of Antigravity, so it's not only for Google models. And also there's mode for planning or fast. In this case, I will stick with planning because I think this task is not that simple. We'll see. We send and we wait. And I will pause this video and I will stop on important pieces. So first you can read what it actually thinks or does, but it jumps really quickly so it's hard to understand. Then it prepares the plan and you can see the plan here on the left. It's already open, so checking checking the code, exploring the code base. And here, the task is to explore code base. It will be done and then backend implementation already kind of planned. So verify user controller. You can see all of that. So it's kind of going in the right direction. 
Also, it knows that there should be inertia middleware. And yeah, it's looking good for now in planning phase. So it hasn't actually started changing the code yet. And by the way, I've chosen automatic mode, so I don't approve any commands. While installing anti-gravity, you will be prompted with will be automatic or manual. So I enabled the default of automatic. So that's why, for example, PHP Artisan make middleware is executed without my approval. So while it's working, you can check on the left the actual plan to modify something, to create a new file controller. So again, it looks good on the surface. But the main problem with IDEs and LLMs and models in general is usually in the implementation details. So on the surface, the plan looks good, but sometimes if something goes wrong, then it sometimes runs in circles trying to fix the small details. We'll see. What I want to emphasize, though, is the final step. Where is that verification plan? So anti-gravity, I'm not sure if it's anti-gravity or Gemini Pro, will create automated tests in Laravel and will try to run it to verify that the code is actually correct. And we'll see how it goes, but it's good that it will generate automated tests without me specifically prompting for that. And yeah, it's already checking test results, creating walkthrough, Oh yeah, we have already test executed, but with two failed events. What is the actual error? The error is not a valid inertia response, which may be for whatever reason with inertia. It may be that validation happened. It may be something wrong in the code, but the code is actually already prepared. And you can actually see changes overview. You can click here and see 10 files already changed, which was pretty fast. And you can browse around. So for example, you can see that in the user model, it tried to, not really convenient to see that, but if we scroll like this, it's adding is admin to cast. Then there's admin middleware, which looks fine. So yeah, you can review the changes while it's doing that. Now what is doing that? Debugging failed tests. And yeah, it seems to fix it and all done. Progress updates. So this is the plan, what was actually done. So after the test failed, it built the front end assets, then rerun. So that was another error. And then exception handling disabled. Okay. And in the Git, for example, in the Git changes, we should see those files actually changed. Now let's see if it actually works. So if we just refresh the page, we have users menu item that's successful. If we click here, we have the table of users. So yeah, the job is done successfully, it feels like. Let's take a look at the code. For example, in the users controller, which I would personally call user controller for kind of standard naming in Laravel, but that's personal preference. The controller looks good, eloquent query. What else, for example, routes web in Laravel, route middleware admin. I personally would put that on top, the users controller, but that is also a personal preference. Oh, it's auto-formatting something, adding spaces here. I don't remember what's the actual PSR setting. Should there be space or not? So along the way, it's also doing the auto-formatting. And then in the React file, so TSX, we have the file. And then we have the new menu item users. So some changes for React as well. And then there's index TSX with the actual table here. Users map, also new date to date string and also showing no users found if there are no users. Looks okay. Some details are personal preference and you can probably provide that in the guidelines. To be honest, I'm not sure what is the format for guidelines for anti-gravity. So each IDE has its own like Claude MD, Agents MD, Cursor MDC and others. I haven't looked at what anti-gravity needs, but pretty sure it's possible to put something in the guidelines. Now, currently when I'm shooting this video, I'm running this prompt for the second time. The first time it actually failed. So this is what I wanted to show you. I've opened another project, but the same thing React Starter Kit. And when it failed the tests, similar like you saw a few minutes ago with our new project, then it tried fixing those tests and then went in circles trying to look at this progress updates. It's checking test result, fixing tests, checking again, debugging, debugging again, checking test, then terminating and retrying with DD, then isolating test, debugging, fixing, checking, fixing, 
and stuff like that. So it went 46 items. So we can scroll down and this is the list. And actually I stopped it after like 10 minutes or so. It didn't deliver. It went in circles without identifying why the automated tests failed. Now the second time I've run the same prompt and as you saw a few minutes ago, it did succeed to identify why the tests were broken. So as usual with any agents or LLMs, it's almost like a lottery whether it will run in circles or not. This is what I meant a bit earlier in this video is that on the surface the plans usually look good for all the IDEs and then at the last steps of trying to finish it off, to tie everything together, to test, this is usually when it goes wrong and sometimes without the final result. But also you can stop the agent at any point and then try to fix the test manually. You would still have by then like 80 to 90% working code. And finally, pricing. Probably one of the main reasons why anti-gravity is so hyped now because it's free. It was launched as a so-called public preview individual plan, $0 per month which gives you access to Gemini 3 Pro and also Cloud Sonnet 4.5. So you get Cloud Sonnet for free without paying Cursor or Anthropic directly. That said, this is free obviously for a limited time and we'll see the pricing when it's out of public preview. And also on Reddit, I found people reporting actual rate limits. So you have some kind of quota, which is not really anywhere in public, which refreshes every five hours. On the official website, they have terms and generous rate limit. And I also found on Reddit that someone hit a rate limit after about 50 requests. So probably you can use anti-gravity for now with Claude or Gemini 3 Pro for some smaller tasks. And if you do, please tell me in the comments what is your impression. To me personally, it's 50-50. When it failed, it failed pretty miserably, but when it succeeded, I'm generally happy. So I will keep experimenting and I will report all the news on this YouTube channel and also on my weekly newsletter. So every Wednesday I send something like this. So this is last Wednesday issue with Gemini 3 Pro released at the time as news. And next week I'll probably have separate section about what people actually think after trying Gemini 3 Pro and anti-gravity as well. So subscribe to that newsletter. The link will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.